Hey guys, welcome back. This is our newly titled podcast, Cut or Tap. Uh, I am Nod Lammers and I'm here with Mio Lammers. Hi. Uh, today we're just going to be talking about some stuff going on uh, on my channel. And then uh, Mio also thought up of a bunch of different things that we're going to be able to talk about throughout the uh, podcast. Because I'm super smart. It's been a while since you've uh, done your podcast. Do you want to reintroduce like what the idea is? is like the general concept of it uh sure yeah so basically the whole thing about it is we're just going to be talking about like what's going on like everything Yu-Gi-Oh, like ban list which i hope we get to talk about today uh decks that we're working on uh series that are coming up uh set releases which i do want to talk a little bit about chaos impact and the uh impact it had on the format <laughs> that was really cheesy thank you <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but yeah, uh, so first and foremost, uh, I want to talk a little bit about the channel and some stuff that's coming up. Of course, I'm doing Chaos Impact versions of decks that are coming up. You guys have seen the Tenyi deck, which uh, if you guys know, uh, and as many of the people down at my locals know, Tenyi is quickly becoming one of my favorite decks. Uh, it, it's been, Worms. Usually if there's a new Worm deck coming out, I want to play it. So It was supposed to be my deck because what happened was I was like, Oh, look, dragons that are actually dragons, but they look awesome. And he was like, yeah, you like the artwork? And I was like, yeah. And he's like, I'll build it for you. And I was like, don't build me everything that I say it looks pretty, then we'll be broke. And then after a while, he's like, well, you like birds too, right? And I was like, yeah, I like birds. And he's like, you can play uh, smorgs. And I was like, okay. And he's like, yeah, so I'm going to build these decks anyways. You can play smorgs. I was like, okay. And then I remember 10 years existed. And they look really pretty, so I was like, but I like the tinnies better. And so he gave me the tinnies, and I haven't ever played either deck. <laughs> <laughs> I've been playing tinny a lot. He, I've been making tinny real good, though. He built them both, and then just took them away. They're actually in a shared <laughs> deck box. They they sit in the same deck box together, which is the funny part. <laughs> like, I built them. to. It, it, I love them. I love them both. Some morgues I love for a completely different reason, but tinnies I, I love simply, like, it's a Wyrm deck, it's a Synchro deck... It's a normal monster. It's like everything I love about stupid, cheesy Yu-Gi-Oh decks, except Tenyi is like actually good. Like, uh, there's a replay I want to post that uh, has me fighting True Draco on it, and uh, like just like I get floodgated. Like everything that could go wrong in that match goes wrong, and I still pull it, pull it through. But um, yeah, uh, one of the decks. Going back to the original point, um, one of the decks I'm doing is Cyber Dragons. I'm also going to be doing a Battle Wasp update. Uh, a few other decks as well. I do want to try and do a pure Orcist, and one of the big decks I'm trying to do is Unchained. I'm actually really close to finishing Unchained. I got my third copy of Disaster and Wailing today, and Friday, uh, which depending on when this goes up, is either after or before, but Friday I'm going to be ordering the two Abominations Prisons, and so uh, we'll be seeing that soon. Um, do you want to talk a little bit about the series that... Oh, uh, which one? Yours? Yeah. Yours? Okay. Yeah. So I, I think it's weird that you want me to talk about. Well, it. I can tell. I can. I can this share is, the name. This a little is one bit. of the uh, the few ideas that you came up with. <laughs> yeah, I know. So I, Throwing I'll, some extra fire. Let there. me. Uh, let me. Let me introduce. <laughs> let me introduce it. All right, and then, and then I'll you, I'll give more detail. Yeah, because you're you're a lot better at explaining yeah. it than me. Yeah, he, uh, he came up with the concept. I came up with the details. Yeah, you're a lot better at explaining. <laughs> Uh, so I'm coming as uh, those who have heard in person and uh, for those remaining in the discord as uh, if you as you've noticed I have removed the discord link from the latest videos uh, working on re-adding that soon but oh, for, really? yeah for now I, I want to keep it uh, to whoever joined okay. for now uh, but I will add the discord link back to the to the video soon. Uh, anyways, uh, as those people select inner circle have heard, uh, I am planning on doing a new series inspired by, um, it's inspired by Nim Nim's uh, Yu-Gi-Oh on a but not uh, Yu-Gi-Oh sealed, sealed only. Yeah, yeah. Yu-Gi-Oh sealed only. Which uh, but it's not like that at all. It's completely different. It it is inspired by it. There's but it's so different. many people that have been ripping the idea off, and it, it's getting kind of boring, kind of raw. So yeah. we want to just put out there this is completely different but inspired by the slightest detail it is of it is very much inspired uh this is i'm calling it low tier hero which is uh basically i take decks with potential and i'm oops, sorry and i make them the most competitive version of themselves that i can so uh to reference some morgan tenny both are really powerful decks like on a locals level and they are pretty decent they're just not quite there yet. I think Tenyi definitely has an upper hand on Samorg, but 
Uh, that's beside the point. Both of them have very high potential. And so it's basically taking decks like those and making them re- as strong as they possibly can be. Mm-hmm. So there's basically, um, there's decks that are um, lower tier that obviously need new cards. They need new materials. They need actual support. And we like, can't produce that. Like Cyberdarks. Well, Cyberdarks is a good example. But we can't produce that ourselves. We have to basically go like on our knees and be like, konami please and they'll never do it anyways yeah but then there are other decks that they are lower tier but i think it's more of just that people haven't really given them enough attention and if we give those decks enough attention we there's such a huge database of cards that are untouched by the ban list some are hidden little treasures that i feel could very strongly boost a deck and most have been uh greatly forgotten yeah, now, together there's uh, a ten thousand different cards right now yeah together as a community there's so many cards in our own mental databases that i'm sure that people could be like hey look here's a really good card it has a really good generic effect it can go in this deck and work amazing or at least potentially work amazing and so the whole point about um was it the low tier low tier hero Basically, the whole concept is taking one of those decks that we have, which we have a bazillion of them, and trying to make them at least rogue using the community. And we're not really, I wouldn't say using. Using is kind of like a tense it's, term. But it's like, an interactive experience between the community. Our, the success that we garner off of Low Tier Hero is the community's success. Yeah, it, it's us coming together and being like, hey, we always say leave suggestions for the deck profiles this time. We want suggestions, and we're going to listen to them. But the issue is that we only have so much in our budget. We can't get things like Pot of Extravagance. Oh my gosh, I wish I could. Mm -hmm. And we only have two Phantasmas, so they obviously can't go in every single profile. We're going to have to divvy out the number of hand traps that we have left over that aren't actually in our already rogue or meta decks. And that's where the struggle comes in. That's where we need the uh, community support to find lower budget tech choices that can potentially make decks even better and this is where we really call out to the casual players yeah it's definitely going to be a very interactive experience between the community and and myself and mio even because she's going to be the one who's like digging through the bulk (laughs) trying to find these cards so um with (laughs) originally this was going to be a just him thing and then he was like hey you should join me in it and i was like why i have for example tenues i have not played them i've heard a lot about them they sound great their artwork is beautiful that's about my knowledge of tenues um not actually not actually i know a a little bit more but uh my point is is that i i was like why would you want me as a part of this and uh his reasoning behind it is because i have this really good like i guess gift or whatever i can read a card and say this would look this would work really well in this deck and most of the time it does really well in the deck that i said it would and if it doesn't do as well as you wanted it to it at least works in one of your other decks real talk i'm like really dumb when it comes to card interaction um (laughs) he's so smart with his database he's like it's such a huge database of cards and for me i have to be like let's read this card oh it goes in this deck like you're welcome i can pick up any (laughs) deck like so we have 11 Uh, ultra pro pro duels under the desk right now as we're recording there's 11 of them down there along with other deck boxes and decks just hanging out under the desk i can pick up any of those and play them efficiently like as efficiently as possible but the second like a new card comes out and i'm like oh i need i I wonder what it does i wonder what deck this could be useful in i i blank i don't know (laughs) See, it feels really awkward after our big speech about how we're trying to have, like, budget tech cards to be like, yes, we have over 60 decks in our collection. Because it really doesn't sound budget at all, my, does My it? goal <laughs> is to be a one-man regional. I do, <laughs> I do have my, uh, my video, which is 40-plus uh, decks on a budget. I think is what it's called and um where yeah, it feels we, like forever ago now yeah because we have gained 20 decks since then um simply because like the process did start off slow at first but then you like get a community going and people are always trading their cards and their decks and it gets uh and you know you have friends that they're like hey i don't really want to build this deck you're interested in it pick it up yeah you know and uh friends really help you with your deck building so if you uh want to go hear our quote-unquote secret tips which are probably tips you've heard a thousand times um go watch that video i'd greatly appreciate the views we'll probably stick the link in the description or a little i card 
If Either we or. remember. <laughs> if we remember. If not, uh, channel is Angel of Alchemy. Yeah. But that, yeah, that's, that's the new... Let me just plug in your podcast <laughs> really fast. No, that's all good. We let Owen plug in the first episode. <laughs> that was, like, the whole point. <laughs> yeah, but it was, like, at the beginning. <laughs> uh, anyway, well, you're, you're, so, you're part so, of Invoked 101, kind so of. So that was his uh, so. big thing on yeah. uh, Low Tier Hero. We're excited for it. Our only I'm, issue... I'm super excited. Our only real issue is uh, doing it in a certain time frame, and we got to find an event to take whichever deck we choose at the end, too. There is... I don't know if we actually mentioned that part, did we? No, what? we didn't mention the whole point of Low Tier Hero is to get our invite with something rogue. Um, whether that means topping an OTS champ, winning an OTS championship, topping a regional or YCS, and then if if we do get our invite, potentially even doing some Nats type stuff with low tier hero. It really depends. So that's actually uh, what sparked the idea is whenever uh, Nim Nim mentioned that he had never gotten an invite until he did his sealed only thing, and that's where the inspiration came from. Yeah. Uh, honestly, it's just the idea of taking uh, something that you would never think would top and doing your best with it, even if we. Even if, you know, he doesn't top with it. The fact that he even took it there, depending on how it did. Mm -hmm. And the community being drawn together in this. I mean, it's going to be such a good experience, you know? It was... It it wasn't... Like, it was very much inspired by Nim Nim. It's also inspired by uh, uh, taking speedroids to a YCS and just seeing how utterly confused a lot of my opponents were and how well I was able to pilot my rogue deck against people who had been playing their their meta decks for entire formats and just didn't know how to counter this this loser with a speedroid deck you know you know what i've said it hundreds of thousands of times i don't know if i ever said it on my channel but people will not expect a deck they haven't prepared for because the truth is is that every deck that's titled rogue they have some side deck card out there waiting to hunt your deck down if you take something that just hasn't been labeled rogue yet, but is in that category, you will destroy. Because the thing is, is that it's all about that expectation. If they don't expect it and you hit them with it, they're going to be thrown off their game most likely. I very much felt Speedroid was an extreme underdog pick mm -hmm. and that it did. I, I talked about it in the vlog. I'm not going to talk about it here. I, I talked mean, about Speedroids enough. My, my topic ties right back into another video of mine where it's confidence in Yu-Gi-Oh. It's all about yep. confidence, man. If you take something that throws off their confidence, you could potentially have game. Well, it was also confidence in the deck itself. Like, exactly. I, like, I, like Which I said, is a point that I actually bring up in my yeah. video. And, you know, I, I, I mentioned it in the vlog. Like, I, the reason I took Speedroids to my first YCS was because I was way comfortable with that deck you know mm -hmm. i i felt confident in speedroids i was like the the fact that it's mostly consistent uh the way that i was building it the way i had it built my side deck option was a little subpar but that was on my fault i should have stuck with my original side deck option and but like it was just my comfort my comfort with the deck and how confident i felt with my synchro monsters yeah well, I won't get too uh, too deep into how that connects to my video, but yeah. you should definitely go watch it, especially because it really is a, a topic that needs to be talked about more. The fact that confidence can alter the games, your persuasion can alter the win for you, it's incredible. Go, uh, go to my channel, check it out, because not just because I want to get views, but actually because I feel like this is a topic that people should be talking about a little bit more. Um, but anyways, I think we covered yeah. our channel, or at least your channel, on what you're yeah. going to do. Do you still want to do mine, or you want to hit can, some other topics? We can talk about yours if you want for a little bit. My channel is my channel. I upload when I have time. <laughs> she does all sorts of stuff from I... very, very well done Yu-Gi-Oh! discussions, ranging from uh, why you should play a deck, like your confidence in, in your choices, and in Yu-Gi-Oh! Why to... players go to regionals, whether yep. they're casual or competitive or both. Mm -hmm. She's done uh, pack openings. She also does a little bit of Yu-Gi-Oh! ASMR. Um, we don't talk about this. <laughs> <laughs> so if you want to check out Angel of Alchemy, she does all sorts of different kinds of content. She is a very discussion-based channel. I'm basically like... I don't want to say like the W word, but I'm a content W word because uh, if I get a request for something enough, I'll I'll try it, you know, um, which is where the uh, ASMR videos actually come in. I got a whole lot of requests from people um, that were like, hey, I really like your voice. I don't know why, because my voice is really deep for a female, but they were like, I like your voice. I like the way you talk. I like your attitude. 
and nobody's ever really done a true Yu-Gi-Oh! ASMR video uh, outside of just normal sound tappings and stuff. Could you try one? And I was like, sure. So honestly, like, my channel is gonna be just wide, wide variety of content. And I know that, uh, that not all of it's gonna fit everyone's, um, but basically my channel is just whatever I want it to be, all Yu-Gi-Oh! related. And, um, I really do it just when I have the time, um, simply just because I, I am, I am very, very busy with work and, uh, I wish I wasn't because I really love my channel, but there are some other things that I really want to get into. Sadly, most of them are logged yeah. on, um, Nod's phone, so I don't currently have them on me, but I have, uh, quite a few, uh, series ideas that I want to do, um, as well as a ton more of discussions. I really love doing discussion-based content, and if you uh, ever want to check out some of my weird, casual perspective discussion-based content, what I do is basically instead of saying, hey, this is a new card that came out, let's talk about it, what I do is go, here's something that affects the community that nobody talks about, let's talk about it. So if you're into that kind of stuff, or you're just into quirky conversations, definitely go check me out. And leave suggestions underneath my comments. I would love to make videos that you want to see. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. But outside of that, I think I've plugged my channel enough. You wanted to talk about the um, last ban list. It's kind of an old topic, but yeah, a little I think bit, it's a little bit. especially with the fact that we are seeing. Um, we did just action. have one of the uh, one of the first YCSs of the season, YCS yeah. London, We're which having... had uh, unexpected results. Yeah, we're having uh, more events so we can actually, like, discuss the ban list oh, yeah. with knowledge of how it actually affected the game. Oh, which yeah. is something that a lot of people don't do, actually. I talked to I talked to Warren a lot about what was going on at... I talked to Warren a lot about what was going on at the Tulsa Regional and how... what he saw there. Um, Striker, according to YCS London, was all top eight spots, which was very... Disappointing. Yeah... I'm upset. I know a lot of a lot of players are really tired of seeing Sky Striker. I personally was when Endymion came out. I've been rooting for Endymion to take like a top spot for a long time. It seems that Endymion is kind of creeping up that way, but not quite. Uh, Orcus. The big difference with Orcus is that now they have to play a pure variant. Although with Scrap Wyvern coming out, it's like who even cares? You're eating up all my points. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Oops. I don't have too much to say. My only point was really those two things. Oh. We talked about it in the car. <laughs> Oops, I'm sorry. I don't have anything else to say. That's basically it. The ban list, once again, was it was small. And yeah. honestly, we, we, t we did a ban list discussion video uh, forever ago, back whenever um, basically the only thing that changed was Stratos was uh, brought back to one. And everyone was uh, like, yeah. everyone said it was such a good ban list, but their only reasoning behind it was Stratos is brought back to one. Yeah. And I, uh, I made a point that I said that nothing changed and the they gave back a card that most of the community really likes destiny heroes and heroes in general so they brought back a card that they knew would distract most of the community to show that they didn't actually change anything yeah so um and i feel like that's something that happens with a lot of our ban lists recently only very few of them actually do anything nowadays because if you notice the ones that we go yeah they finally did this they hit that card i wanted Less than a month later, you hear about a card that's coming out, and people are saying it's gonna be better than the card that yeah. they just hit. The the issue I saw with this one specifically, like they unbanned a lot of stuff. Like I personally like that uh, that Dark Arm Dragon came to two. That was something that I felt needed to happen. Um, shout out to the old uh, "Where's the Dark Arm Dragon" meme. Uh, but like. There was there was only three cards banned. We had Mermaid Band, we had a Garpain Band, and I forgot what the no yeah it was Mermaid Band, a Garpain Band, and then Widow Anchor got hit to one if I recall. There might have been a third band, but I I honestly couldn't tell you what it was. And then Dark Arm Dragon went to two, and then a bunch of stuff came off the list, and it's like it wasn't. It, it's it seems like these last couple ban lists have been Konami trying to force a play style upon the newer decks. You know what I'm saying? Like, or not the newer decks, the older decks that have been taking the formats for so long. So like Thunder Dragon had to become a more pure variant. Orcus has to be 
pure orcist sky striker they're not trying to kill sky striker we all know they're not trying to kill strike sky striker the issue being they're trying to keep it as an engine and then uh dragon link I, they hit agar pain but now we have but then they brought back super rejuve and now we have an ftk so it's like it's 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 an issue it's just that konami once put off we had February March format. Everyone loved February March February March format except for Pinal Magicians were a little too crazy. That's it. That's the only thing that needed to change was that yeah, one they had the deck. FTK. That one deck. And instead Konami hit that one deck kind of lightly so that they were still kind of around and then they had to hit them again as far as I remember. I could be wrong about that, but I remember them being a little uh, kind of around a little afterwards and they had to hit them again before people were like, "Oh my god, they're dead. How could yeah. they do that?" But I remember Konami hitting tons of decks, and it was the variety of decks that they hit for no reason that weren't, like, overpowered at all. They just happened to be topping, and it was crazy because it was such a diverse format, and they killed it because they hit everything that was being diverse and lightly hit the deck that was actually being an issue. Yeah. And then, halfway through almost the years of basically the same format we've had forever the only thing that really changed was adding salamangrades to the group to the little huddle um and those they even hit, became a they problem hit salamangrades and then they tried to give them a better card and it didn't really work and salamangrades are still a thing but they're not as big of a thing as they used to but the thing is is that they crippled the one deck that kind of they they tried to at least cripple the one deck that actually was new in the format that yes people got tired of very fast because it was just seen way too much because it, it was easily yeah. ex accessible um it was played by way too many people but uh, if it wasn't for that one factor people were excited to have something new they c yep. tried to cripple that deck and then they barely touched any of the others that have been around for forever and then at one point went oh, well, we're not going to have a ban list because people love this format so much. Even it's, though it's the same Konami, crap. it's been a year. People are so tired of it. The people that are topping with the decks that are, you know, around and have been around for forever haven't changed their deck in a year. Yeah, no, dude, those people who invested in those engages back when they first came out have gotten value out of those engages for, like, two almost two years at this point. Thunder Dragon players who invested in Thunder Dragon when it came out gotten value for literally a year at this point soul fusion is a year old at this point like if you invested in a deck within the last year that was meta you have been able to play that deck for that year like i can't think of a deck that actually died even altergeist it has continued to come back the only the only good thing that's come out of this bandlet one of the better things not the only good thing because i do think that this format does have a bit more variety or at least it leaves itself open to more room for other rogue decks to come in and take uh take a chokehold on it and be like yes we're rogue we're here we can counter stuff yeah. um i do think that that's more open but the, one of the best things that came out of this is we finally are done with mermaid full orcus combo Mm -hmm. I am. I was so done with all those orcus decks. but the thing is is that like let's let's be straight up honest here Full Orcus combo was the only thing people actually enjoyed simply for the fact that they got to make fun of it. Yeah, it was amazing. And that's it. And now it's gone. So all we have left is actually just pure boredom. And pure Orcus combo. Because, because <laughs> that was so stupid. Pure Orcus combo. <laughs> I hate you. Uh -oh. <laughs> but the thing is, is that that was legitimately the only piece of fun that we had left, really. And now it's just boring. It's just absolutely flat and boring. I, and we need a change, but they're not willing to change. Them. I actually think that um, them banning Mermaid and not hitting another Orcus card. So people, uh, from what I've been told by uh, my, my friend who is an OTS champion, he's won, re he's topped regionals and gotten prize cards and such. Um, uh, he... Uh, me and him, I talked to him today while I was building, while I was working on my 10 deck, and he uh, was, I asked him about the format right now, because I missed the latest regional, and he was like, yeah, no, uh, Luna Light Orcus is still a thing, you can still play it, you just play a bigger Orcus package with discards, and I was like, oh, 
So you're just still playing Luna Orcus, and apparently Azathoth is a much bigger thing again. So uh, expect I, I expect Azathoth to be banned on the next list, because Azathoth is becoming a big issue now. Like, again. I still think that card name is funny. Thought. <laughs> Azathoth. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, basically my thoughts of the ban list is that once again, they're not doing enough, and mm -hmm. there's very obvious reason for why they're not doing enough, and it's kind of selfish, and honestly, I, uh, I really hope we change something up, because, um, as a casual competitive player, I'm not really feeling the competitive because whenever you just kind of play the same thing for so long, maybe this is the casual part of me that's speaking, but you kind of learn too much about everyone else's decks, and then you kind of flatline on your deck building. Like, yeah, sure, every once in a while some new cards come out, but, like, you just kind of get to a point where it's like, yeah, this is consistent. This is what's working. That's it. I think I think one of the biggest issues currently for this format is we haven't had a set that's come out that's released a set of cards. So, like, let, let me use Flames of Destruction as an example, because I think Flames of Destruction was the last set that really introduced a set of cards like this. Um, when Flames of Destruction came out, we had cards introduced like the Nightmares, like the Nightmare Links, and Called by the Grave, and Infinite Impermanence. And there was a few other cards that are still meta-defining to this day that were in Flames of Destruction. We haven't had a set that introduced a whole set of new meta relevant cards in a while. Like, like we just haven't had that in pushed into our game for some time. Like Chaos Impact and Rising Rampage introduced. Uh, I'm trying to like off the top of my head. There's only three brand. Well, okay, there was Marine Sess, there was Tenny, there was Unchained, there was some Morgue, and I really think that was it for new archetypes. There was only four new archetypes, and uh, three of those archetypes came out of Rising Rampage. The only new archetype, to my knowledge, that came out of um, uh, Chaos Impact was Unchained. Mm -hmm. So, and like, while yes, Unchained Abomination is a generic Link Four who can pop, uh, who can pop three uh, three cards in one turn, and we do have IP Mascarina in that set as well, along with the uh, Tenny Draco Master Link, which is a very good card uh, as a generic Link monster it's not they're not played in a variety of decks you know like ip mascarina is the most generic thing and that's just to make offer max so if you don't have an offer max you're not really using ip mascarina can we just talk about how absolutely amazing that card art is like <laughs> oh she uh she's sexy <laughs> oh my god yeah. i'm just saying <laughs> um so uh for those who don't know i mentioned it in the 10 e deck profile i did open a box of chaos impact it was a wonderful box. I pulled a lot of good stuff out of it. One of the card being which was a uh, ultra rare IP Mascarina, which Mio promptly took and claimed as her own. Uh, yeah, for uh, <laughs> good reasons. <laughs> anyway, it's I'm in, the only girl you get. <laughs> it's, the, it's in the collection binder right now, sitting there until we can figure out something to play it in. Sadly, at this point. sadly, I was at work whenever he decided to go on his adventure to choose his own box <laughs> and pull stuff. And although he did get good stuff. I then went and blessed a few friend, uh, friends' boxes and helped them pull some pretty uh, pretty spicy stuff. Yeah, one of them pulled the prismatic. If you uh, want to check out what... Um, well, thanks for giving oh, it away. Oh, sorry. I Oops. was going to plug the Instagram, but now, I mean, well, I mean, guess, I guess we all know what... Anyways, uh, they don't go, know to, which one. go to uh, Invoke 101 on Instagram and you can see all of our fun little goofy pictures and uh, stuff that our friends pull that we like to post because we're sad and don't have pretty shiny stuff of our own. <laughs> uh, you can also check it out in the Locals vlog. Yep. The uh, 10 Yee Locals vlog. Mm -hmm. Um... I realized as I was listening to you, we're really <laughs> negative. <laughs> oh, really? I think we're just bored of this format. But, I mean, like, I was listening to you, I was like, man, we, we don't have anything nice to say well, about that's kinda, Konami. Well, that's kind of the point of Low Tier Hero, bringing Konami. it back to that. Is that, like, a, <laughs> is that, like, I want to invigorate the format using, like, this roguish deck, which, uh, like, this is just because I'm playing a lot, playing it a lot, and it has new cards, and I'm just excited to play it. I'm going to keep talking about Tenyi. Uh, like, I was on a speedroid kick when I was getting ready for YCS Fort Worth. Now I'm on a 10 e kick. Two months, I'm going to be on, like, an unchained kick. Not even two months. Like, two weeks from now, I'm going to be, like, on an unchained kick and trying to 
figure out that deck and, and then, then somewhere in the timeline he's gonna pick up cosmos or or super quants and then be like <laughs> man i love this deck i never play this deck it's what he does every time i do fair true <laughs> when you have when you have as many and then i'm gonna come back to invoked mech knight and be like why did i ever leave you <laughs> Alistair is true waifu. <laughs> yeah, dude, I'm gonna go back to like that or like Thunder Dragon and be like, what did I do? <laughs> oh, what do you mean? I'm I'm confused. Yeah, anyway. And I ruined it. I'm just confused. Oh, anyways, um, so we've been talking for like 30 minutes. Do you have any last things to say? Oh, what? We're cutting it off now? Oh, that's what I was saying. Wrap it up. Oh, I was you want to keep going? Yeah, I thought we were going. Okay, for well longer. now we're gonna have to edit it. Oh no, that's fine. Yeah, it's we have to it. cut it out. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> <coughs> Fuck, <coughs> I'm dying. Well, now we definitely have to cut it out. <laughs> no, they can't know that. Like that, they can't know I tried to poison you on. <laughs> 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 Obviously, this is this is lie. Or is it? Uh, or is it not? Oh my god. <laughs> um, <laughs> All right. So Chaos Impact has come and it's been it's it's been at YCS London and it's been at regionals. What what are your thoughts on the set as a whole? For me personally, I think that it's a decent little set, but it's nothing that like me personally got me all like riled up for it mm -hmm. was something that was fun to open just for the packs just to see what was inside but whenever it comes down to it like unless you pull like the really like really pretty secret rares like i gotta be honest those unchained secret rares they are gorgeous even the unchained abomination ultra rare I is really pretty i understand why the price dropped but i understand greatly why the price was so high at first because they oh, yeah. are they are so 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 beautiful but other than seeing those beautiful works of art really didn't have any like hold on me you know like nothing that really reached out and went yes this was an amazing set it was a really good set like good but i'm not going to say it was like my yeah. favorite like ip and safer it was are... no um it was no savage strike it was no savage strike yeah i was i was actually about to say that i was like it's not like savage strike where where we got like super hyped for it and had if, a bunch of cards that were really cool if you have a mat and you don't want it please give it to me oh yeah real talk so uh we actually have every single sneak peek mat going from collection. going from flames of destruction to chaos impact uh which you guys if you follow the channel you would have seen as we picked up the mats i usually did a deck profile at least once on it we picked up i picked up the soul fusion one at the ycs uh fort worth and uh, so now the only one we're missing is Savage Strike. So if you have a Savage Strike playmat and you're, you know, not using it, <laughs> hook it up. I would greatly appreciate a mat. Or if you're even selling one, I mean, definitely contact us once again. Vote 101 on Instagram. Yep. Hit us up on Instagram. We'll By the way, this is out. how you do this. This is called plugging your stuff throughout <laughs> the video so they can't skip it. <laughs> but yeah, uh, uh, my thoughts on Chaos Impact as a whole... I, uh, I like the new Tenyi cards, <laughs> if I haven't talked about Tenyi enough in this. Uh, the Unchained is something that I was really excited for when it was announced. I saw them and I was like, oh my god, those those sound cool. Um, so I'm, I'm excited to have most of them. And like I said, I will be picking up the... Uh, I need two more Abominations Prisons now, uh, which I will be getting very soon. Uh, that's currently really the only card I have to buy for the, for the deck. I have to get one more of the Link 2 as well, but after that it should be pretty set up and ready to be built um and then but like there wasn't a lot like they you know we had the new tachyon dragon like the star liege uh safer and galaxy spiral dragon and um tachyon whatever dragon uh we had those but those aren't really going to do anything i feel just the level eight tachyon stuff i, I don't think that's worth anything um no I, I chaos impact is is okay i definitely think it's better than rising rampage i uh i enjoyed opening uh chaos impact a lot more than opening rising rampage i zoned out <laughs> <laughs> uh yeah i mean but i will agree with your last statement that i did here which is, it was a good set <laughs> yeah yeah it's it's better it's definitely better um i'm Ignister Assault definitely seems to be the next set to include something that will be meta. Although, according to OCG lineups, uh, Ignister is not doing anything. 
Uh, you know what we should have totally done for this podcast? Do what? It's Halloween on Thursday. Oh my god. Let's talk about those ghosty girls and skeleton boys and all the awesome card art that is dedicated to the creepy wonders some spooked, of the world. Some spooktober cards, our favorite spooky boys. Yeah, let's talk about the fact that adulteries are obviously the treats. <laughs> I am so down with that idea. Like... I mean, everyone kind of does the whole, like, ghost tricks are the uh, tricks the, yeah, and then medulces are the treats, but medulces are very obviously the treats. You could say yeah. quite a few things are the tricks. Yeah, I mean, like, mm-hmm. like medulces r- really are kind of one of the, I think they really are the only food-based archetype in the whole game. I don't, I know there's some other cards that are based around food, like you Hungry mean, Burger. You mean that they're one of a kind, like me? Oh my gosh. <laughs> Oh, you just reminded me of a, a series that I really wanted to do that you never let me do. <laughs> and now I'm upset at you. What's the series? It was the series. It was uh, Cooking with Yukio. Oh, my God. I forgot. Yeah. And every time oh. I asked you to take me to the grocery store, you were like, well, we'll do it another time. <laughs> we should go to the grocery store like right now. <laughs> for those of the for those of you who don't know what, what my idea was, uh, basically what I would do is I would... Um, I. I went to culinary school. It was one of my greatest passions for a whole decade before I decided that I would probably cry every day if somebody yelled at me in the kitchen. And so it's now a hobby of mine. And I decided that I really like card arts that have food on it and I should just recreate um, food that is uh, presented in Yu-Gi-Oh card art while talking about Yu-Gi-Oh, kind of like this podcast, but instead of doing a podcast that's boring in just one flat screen, I'd oh be cooking. God. I'd be cooking, right? And like, let's be honest, pre-preparation of rights, that's Thanksgiving. That's oh my Thanksgiving God. special. <laughs> it would be awesome. You gotta put some like happy sad masks on that turkey. No! Oh, <laughs> I love it. Um... But yeah, no, that was my idea, and I didn't get to do it, and now I'm sad. <laughs> if you guys want to support Mio and her dream of cooking with Yu-Gi-Oh, please donate to our Patreon. Link in the description. It would be awesome, and I would greatly appreciate it. So if you guys it. want to see that, put it in the Patreon. Yeah, because that was another issue we had, is that like I'm, I never have money, and so buying food for my little show, would it's just a lot, you know? Yeah. Um... But anyways, back to the fact that Madolches are the treats. <laughs> uh, skull servants are pretty spooky. Yeah, you know? I think I think honestly, skull servants should be like one of those first thought of decks, and sadly they're not. And for the most part, it's like Ghost Tricks, Ben Dreads, and uh, you know. I think a lot of people just don't realize Skull Servant is an archetype because yeah. it's so old. They only get like a card like once every four years, right? Something like that. Yeah, we're actually uh, almost due for a new card. I don't think they're going to get one. I don't one. think we're going to get think, one either. I think after so long, they're probably going to forget. I would love... But then again, they did have the speed duels where they... Yeah, like... exactly. And they got their own skill so card. I think they may make another one for speed duels, but yeah. I don't know I about will, the actual card. I think the skill card quantifies as our new card to Konami. Which is kind but, of disappointing. Which, which does suck, because it's like, ah, oh, I wanted an actual Skull Servant card. Yeah. Um... Uh, I love Skull Servants. You know what's, uh, <laughs> what's crazy is that uh, decks that people don't really think about whenever they think kind of Halloween spookiness, like Burning Abyss, uh, for oh, example. Oh, kind of. There kinda. are a lot of demons for the most part. So like that's another deck that you can technically say, you can technically argue, yeah, is could... kind of Halloween-ish. Halloween-ish. You know? um, any like odd ones for you? Any odd ones? I'm yeah. trying to think if there's like any... So, like, usually I instantly go for, like, stuff that I play. Um, definitely... Cosmos. They're Cosmo. all cosplaying in Star Wars Star- here. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, but what about, like, um... I think you mentioned it. What about, like, Vendreds? Well, I already mentioned Vendreds. Okay, those okay, are, those yeah. Are one of, that's one of the decks that people, like, kind of just go, Oh, this one's very obviously yeah. spooky. Okay, um, okay. Oh, what, what about, like, Mayakashi, even? I don't think I've actually ever s- seen. It's a zombie archetype. They're, like, a zombie synchro. They're, I like, mean, a I zombie would, I would assume anything that has to do with zombies and synchro summoning, obviously, it's, it's a cult. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so Shiranui is... All, well, Shiranui actually probably do, looks very culty to a degree. I don't want to, like... 
dump on <laughs> Shiranui. They they are they do have some very pretty artworks and um, is cool. But falafels, that's another one that's kind of like frightful. Oh, the fright for guys? The fright yeah. for parts of falafels, at least. Like, oh, that, yeah. that's something that, like, honestly could be argued as a, as a Halloween themed deck that not a lot of people actually think about, you know, just because oh, their artwork is like. You know what? Last year we did the Demise deck as a Halloween deck. I don't think we actually did because I don't really think No, because it was, it was Phantom Knights versus Demise. Oh, no. Okay, so that wasn't. You're thinking. You're remembering it wrong. No, oh. that was for our Halloween duels. It wasn't yeah. a Halloween deck. It was just duels that we were having on Halloween night. Okay. Because, anyway, Phantom Night still. Remember, I was very, very. Uh, I was a very young Yu-Gi-Oh player <laughs> once long ago in ancient times. She never knew how to read Yu-Gi-Oh card text. <laughs> but no, uh, that was just Halloween duels. Which, by the way, it kicked your button, and they were really fun. And hilarious to watch. I rewatched them not too long ago. Are you serious? Yeah, no, you just <laughs> anyone listening to this to this point, which if you are, like good on You're you the for trooper. Yeah, I mean like sticking it through our boring conversation. Like, I'm I'm proud of you. I'm not even gonna watch this. <laughs> <laughs> so Um, but no, you should check that out as well. We've already thrown like seventeen other videos at you. Go check this one out. Um but, yeah, no, I don't really think that they're, like, Halloween-ish just because, like, they're not really... I mean, you could argue that you could dress up as them, but, I mean, in the end, they're not really, like, spiritual or scary or, or anything. They're, they're... I don't know their lore. Somebody out there is going to criticize me for this, but, like, from my perspective, without knowing their lore, they're gods. They just want to blow up the earth. No, and it's just that the, the, they are all powerful beings yeah. or deities of some sort, and that doesn't really fit the Halloween theme no, in my you, in my you, opinion. I get that. I get that. Man, like uh, I would say DDD, but DDD isn't really Halloweeny either, because those are I those mean, those are similar in the vein of like because they're all kings and stuff. Yeah, they're all royalty. I mean, I guess you could kind of be like witchcrafters, maybe. Yeah, well, they're they're because witches. They're, they're witches. witches. Oh, evil eye. Oh, that's evil. Good. They're to and like vampire. Yeah, vampire. Yeah, obviously. easily vampire. Yeah, yeah. E or evil swarm, maybe. Kind uh, of. Eh. Maybe? I guess. They're, well, they're kind of like undead versions of of other of yeah, other. Yeah, which archetypes. is why which is why I was like, kind of, because they got the like the the plant dude. <laughs> Mandrake. I get so sad. I know he's no. Cosmo B. It's so sad that it's Cosmo My Beat. poor baby Cosmo Beat. I love Cosmo Beat, killed. too, because he looks like a little dancing. He's like a dancing little turnip. I turn know, up. he is so happy, and <laughs> then he turns into, like, some flower, and it's like, oh. Some, some hot topic, the Cheerio. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, I found Guy Liner. <laughs> but, but, uh, yeah, no, oh, Cosmo Beat. I love Cosmo Beat. Oh, dude, I remember when I found that out, I looked at you, like, so seriously, and I was like, did Strawberry die? <laughs> you were so, like, curious. I was so upset. I was... Because you found out, like, some of the... Because I told you some of the lore, and you're like, then Trius died. <laughs> oh, my gosh. And, like, the fact that, um... He transforms into Bargion, because Bargion isn't real. I was uh, like, oh. Yeah. Ah, uh, so sad. So I love good. I love Naturia's. Naturia is awesome. I wish, the, <laughs> dude. Naturia need a new card. Hurry up, <laughs> give Naturia a new card. So hey. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think that's I think that's it for this one. We're kind of running we're running on fumes, here, <laughs> so I think I think we're gonna wrap it up. Anyways, it is, it is like pretty late. It's like oh my god, yeah. We're old. We go to bed <laughs> at six. No, I'm it's, <laughs> it's like ten. It's, and, like, uh, ten. it's we, like ten going on. I got 11. off work, so I'm I'm dead tired <laughs> but yeah so long story short to recap everything go to my channel click and like every video <laughs> support me like <laughs> oh my god give me your praise <laughs> stop free nats anyway, invite <laughs> anyway check out check out mio's channel I angel of alchemy <laughs> tenies are amazing chaos impact was iffy the ban list good. was sad the ban list sucked we're 
boring, but watch our videos. We're, sa- we're, we're very, very happy that we decided not to go to YCS London. Yeah. Because that was something we had talked about early in the year. Uh, it's going, and very happy we did not yeah, waste our money for that. Yeah, Top 8 Skystriker was pretty garbo. That would, that would have sucked. I would have been so upset if we wasted our money to yep. go there. But, yeah. Anyways... Thank you guys for watching. Thank you, Mio, for being on my Cutter Tap podcast. What were they watching? I don't know. Nothing. I'm just doing arm movements. <laughs> Jeez, leave me alone. <laughs> Thank you for listening. <laughs> yeah, thanks for listening, and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.